Hey everybody, RPG here. Today I want to talk to you guys about the RPCS3 PlayStation 3 emulator. So I did a video not too long ago showing you guys how to make custom configurations for certain games to better the performance on those using the wiki page as your reference. So that covers all of the games that have customizations to them, but what about the games that say, just leave the default settings as they are? Here's the issue that I ran into. I left everything as it was for my RPC S3 emulator, and I started jumping into these titles that didn't require anything changed to their configuration settings, and I was running into major issues with the performance on these games. Some of them I couldn't get to load up, some of them would take like 20 minutes to load through the initial screens, you know, before you actually get to like the main page in your game. This should take typically like a minute to a two minutes, um, it was taking me like 20 in multiple cases of games. Some games were lagging out, some were having audio cutouts, but all of them were totally unplayable. So I started looking into the default settings and I realized that my default settings didn't match the default settings that the wiki page had recommended. So I dived into it a little bit further and it turns out that the default settings can be different for the RPC S3 emulator depending on when you downloaded it and how you downloaded it. So. I'm running everything through Botticera, so my version might be different than your version if you're just downloading it and using it on Windows or a different emulation platform. So basically, we may all have different default settings. However, the wiki page recommends one set of default settings. So it's really confusing and there definitely seems to be some disconnect. So I actually went into my RPC S3 emulator, made all these changes to the default settings. So I took the default settings that I got and change them to the default settings that are recommended. So it's definitely a little bit confusing, definitely some disconnect here, but hopefully this is going to solve it for a lot of people because I know a lot of others are experiencing the same problems that I ran into within this emulator. So I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step step what we need to do to override what may be our default settings and change them to the default settings that the wiki page recommends for the RPC S3 emulator. This is going to improve pretty much all of your game's performances except for the games that you have gone in and made custom configurations for. So I know it sounds super confusing, but we're gonna jump into this. I'm gonna walk you guys through exactly what you need to do to your settings to better your performance. And this is going to work for anybody using the RPC S3 emulator. It doesn't matter how you're using it. So whether you're running it on Botticera or on Windows or on a different emulation platform, it will make no difference. This is the default settings that is recommended from the wiki page for this particular emulator, regardless of what platform or system you're running it on. So let's jump into it. I'm gonna walk you guys through step-by-step step all the pages in our custom configurations so we can make a solid default setting across the board. All right, so to set up our default settings for the RPC S3 emulator, I'm actually using this today on Botticera, so I have to go to one of my main pages and I need to hit the F1 button on my keyboard. If you're just using the RPC S3 emulator by itself on Windows or um, you know whatever platform you're using it along with, just go to the uh, point where you open up the actual application. So for Botticera, I'll go over to the uh, side column here in my file system and I'm gonna jump over to the RPC S3 application. Double click on that and we're gonna open up into our list of different games here. So first thing we need to do is we need to go up to configuration up at the top and you're going to see a bunch of different categories here. So we have a long list and we need to go through each of these. So we're gonna start at the top at CPU. So we'll click on CPU configuration and we're just dealing with this page right here. And we can actually go through all of those lists right across the top tab in here. So we're gonna start with CPU and our first option is PPU decoder, we wanna set that to recompiler LLVM in parentheses. Next thing down is our SPU decoder. We wanna do the same thing, recompiler LLVM in parentheses. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna jump into additional settings and we have about, let's see, five different options here. We don't want any of these checked. So make sure that everything under additional settings is not checked. Now over here in the final column for CPU, we have TSX instructions. This is going to be over here in TSX instructions. We're going to leave this blank. In fact, I can't even click on it here in Botticera. Next one down is SPU block size. We're going to hit this and make sure that it is selected to safe. Next one down is preferred SPU threads. We want that set on auto. So now we can jump over to our GPU tab. And in here, 
we want to make sure that our first selection for renderer is selected to Vulkan. So we just hit that. Usually I think it is, um, at least for me, it was set on OpenGL. We want it on Vulkan. So now the next thing you want to do is you want to go to graphics device and you want to just select, you know, whatever pertains to your system. So here I'm using a GeForce GTX 1650. So by default, it just automatically selects that for me. So whatever yours selects for you is probably where you want to go, but check and see if you have multiple options. For me, this is, you know, what I'm using about a Sarah on today. So it automatically populates in, but just double check that one and select the best option that makes the most sense for your specific setup. Next thing we want to do is jump down to aspect ratio. We're going to go with 16.9 and we're going to do frame limit and we're going to select that as off. Next is the anisotropic filter. We want that set on auto here. You don't want to go on 2x, 4x, 8x, or 16x. Make sure it's on auto. And then the next option over, we want set to auto as well. Now we're going to jump over to where it says default resolution right up here at the top. We're going to go with the recommended one, which is 1280 by 720. Um, this is your best bet. Now, if you want to go in here later on with certain titles and, you know, adjust it and maybe try to bring it up to 1920 by 1080, that would be fine. But definitely want for the default settings, everything to be on the recommended, which is that 1280 by 720. Now for resolution scale, we're going to leave that on 100. I'm pretty sure this is default across the board when you, um, you know, first open this particular emulator. But sometimes I have seen people say that they've, uh, you know, jumped in here and it's been set to like 80%. So make sure it's on 100. That's where you want to be. So the next thing we're going to jump down to is our resolution scale threshold. This we want set on 16 by 16, which it says right here is default in the parentheses. So go ahead and do that. Now over for shader mode, we want to go to our second option down, which is async multi-threaded in parentheses. Dropping down from there, we have number of shader compiler threads. We want this set on auto. And then right below that, we have additional settings. There's a bunch of different ones here. There looks to be seven, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. All seven of these you want unchecked. So make sure nothing here has been checked. Next thing we're going to do is jump over to our audio tab. Once we're in audio, we want our audio out as open AL. Audio channels, we're going to down mix to stereo. Below that, we have audio settings. Both of these, we have dumped file and convert to 16-bit. Both of these are going to go unchecked. Now for microphone settings, I just leave it on standard here. And then for volume, we're going to leave master on 100%. Going to the right, we have buffering. We want to enable buffering, and we have this set on 100 MS. Next thing down, it says enable time stretching. We're going to leave that unchecked as well, and we're gonna jump over to our input and output tab up here at the top, which is abbreviated as I slash O. So for keyboard handler, we're gonna leave it as null. For mouse handler, we're gonna leave it as basic. Camera input, we're gonna put unknown. Camera settings, we're going to leave as null. Move handler, we're going to leave as null. And buzz emulated controller, we're going to leave as null. Jumping over to the system tab up here now. Console language. Now, this is where, obviously, if you're in a different country, speaking a different language, you can customize this. But for here in the US, we're going to do it as console language English, console region America. Enter button assignment, we're going to select the second option, which is enter with cross. This cache is going to be left unselected, so make sure that this does not have a check mark in it. And then keyboard type, again, if you're in the United States, you're going to be using the English keyboard, and then in parentheses, US standard. Uh, console time, you can go in here and uh, customize that. I have that set to today's date and time. Just make sure that it's accurate for you. And then homebrew, we're going to leave that un unchecked as well. Now jumping over to network up here at the top. Um, you can do this however you want. I just leave network as disconnected. None of that is going to hinder performance or anything like that within this emulator. Now we're gonna jump over to advanced. Over here in advanced, we are going to just pretty much leave this. This is exactly how it was for me. So I have up here at the top, um, accurate LLVM uh, DFMA is checked but unselectable. Um, and then I have everything else unchecked. Sleep timers accuracy, I have that set as, as host. 
And then for maximum number of spurs threads, we're gonna leave that as unlimited default in parentheses. Now going over here to the firmware libraries, you can see that they're all in here, but nothing is checked on both of these lists. Uh, and then for GPU over here, I'm gonna leave all of these unchecked right now. You're gonna come in here with certain games when you access the wiki and look up certain titles. And some of them you're gonna to have to go in for those particular titles and make selections here. But by default, we want all of these unchecked. Now the next option down is driver wake up delay. I have that on um, one right here. V blank frequency is set to 60 HC, clock scale 100%. Moving on to the emulator tab. So over here we have our emulator settings. We want to have all of these options checked. And just to read them off to you, just so you can see that, you know, they're exactly lined up with what you have on your screen. We have the top option as exit RPC S3 when process finishes. Next one down is automatically start games after boot. Start games in full screen. Prevent display sleep while running games. Show trophy pop-ups. Use native user interface and show shader compilation hint. Again, all of these are selected and checked. Right below that we have max LLVM compile threads and we have the option selected as all. And then it has 12 in parentheses. Next column is viewport. We're not going to have any of these checked. Next one down is shader loading screen. We want to allow custom background, so we're gonna check that. And we are going to set the background darkening on 30% background blur on 0%. Right below that we have game window title. We're not gonna do anything in here. And then over here on our final column is performance overlay. The only thing that's selectable given the settings that we have in place so far is enable performance overlay and we're gonna let that go unchecked. Now the last tab is GUI. And in here we have our UI style sheets. We're gonna leave that as default bright in parentheses. UI colors, nothing is selected. UI settings, just pretty much buttons here. Um, we're gonna leave everything as it is. Load settings here is current settings. Log beneath that is maximum log blocks 1000, maximum TTY blocks 1000. UI options over here in our final column on the right. Only thing we're gonna select is show boot game dialog and show PKG installation dialog. The other options are unchecked. Next one is check for updates on startup. We can go ahead and select that as yes. And then for Discord, we're going to leave it checked as use Discord rich presence. And that's everything we need to do here. So most important part, once you've made all of these changes to your settings here, we want to click apply down here with the green check on it. And then we're going to also hit save. Make sure that you do both of these. Apply and then save and all of those are going to save and get put into place. Now I will tell you if you already have games in here like I do, all of these games I actually had different settings for by default because my default settings as I mentioned in the beginning of this video were not accurate to what I needed. So once you do all of this and you've made your changes, you do need to go in for each title and reload in your modules. So let's select a game, uh, Alien versus Predator here. I'm going to hit play. And for this particular title, you're gonna see up here now, I'm gonna be compiling PPU modules and I have my progress bar here. I'm at zero of 95. So I do wanna make mention of this because this is not a quick process. Each game can take varying uh, extents of time, but for the most part, each one's gonna take you about 10 to 15 minutes. So if you have a big collection, I have a, you know, not, not a massive collection currently, but I'm consistently adding more and more games here. But uh, for a collection like this, I obviously want to spend a little bit of time going through each of these and compiling those PPU modules because it is going to take quite a bit of time to do everything. If I want to boot up my system and jump directly into a game, I'm not able to do that right now until everything has been um, fully compiled and all these PPU modules have been set up. So make sure that you just go through your list and you know when you have some time, just you know, hit play, let it do its thing. It'll automatically launch that game. You can exit that game, come back here and go down to the next game. So you can also do this if you're in Botticera from your regular game, um, game collection menu. So that's gonna do it for this tutorial. 
All right, so as you can see from this video, the process is fairly straightforward now that I've kind of done the legwork and um, accessed the reference points. Within the wiki page, made those changes. You can just follow along with the video here and make those changes on your end to get your default settings to what they're supposed to be on this particular emulator. So again, if you have to go into the wiki page and look up certain titles, I recommend doing so. You're going to see on there whether it recommends using these default settings or going in and making some small adjustments, whether it's in your advanced settings or uh, in your GPU or CPU pages. So that's typically where your changes would lie, but you know every title is different, but the majority of them that I've found so far, and you can see my collection is not massive on here, but um, from the 20 or so titles that I've put together so far on this emulator in Bodicera, uh, everything does seem to be mostly using these default settings. I think I've used the uh, custom settings um, maybe on five or six titles. So, um, you know, definitely more than half so far have been using these default settings, but they were using them wrong because I had the wrong default settings. So really confusing, but I think this is going to simplify it for everybody. Hopefully it does. If you found this video helpful, smash the like button for me and be sure to reach out with any questions you may have regarding this. I know that the um, RPC S3 emulator setup can be a little bit tricky and um, definitely confusing at times. So feel free to hit me up in the comments section below or reach out to me directly if you have any questions at all. Always happy to help out any way I possibly can. That's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like the video. If you haven't yet subscribed, be sure to subscribe. Um, we do a ton of different videos on here based on retro gaming, so product reviews, gameplay demos, tutorials like this one, Forgotten Favorites YouTube series every Monday and Thursday night. So there's tons of content to see on here. Best way to stay in the loop is to subscribe. You can hit the bottom right corner of this video to subscribe instantly here on YouTube. Thanks again.